نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him We seek his aid and assistance We seek his forgiveness from our shortcomings Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides None can misguide And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents from guidance None can guide that person Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness another day Another Friday, another Yawmul Jum'ah The blessed day of Jum'ah As we are all aware Yesterday marked the uh, Independence Day of the United States of America, as we all know. And even if you're a person who has no clue about the dates, you don't know what month we're in or what year we're in or what day we're in, you would at least heard the fireworks and saw the lights in the sky and you'll know that this was the Independence Day of the United States of America. And there's no shortage of uh, attention given to this event. It is a national holiday. There are books written, articles, movies, textbooks. All of this attention is given to this holiday to the point where everybody knows what this holiday is about. And why is that? Because they know, people know, and the people of the country know that history is important. And being connected to the history is important for the success of any people. You don't know your history and you're not connected to your history, then you're going to lose your way. And this will lead to the downfall of nations when they're not connected to the history. So there's no shortage of attention given to the history of this country. And that's why they have this big holiday known as the Independence Day, 4th of July. As Muslims, we should also be connected with our history. We should know our history so that we are able to draw the lessons from the history and connect ourselves to those who have came before us. So as everyone may be aware, very soon we will enter into a new Islamic year. An event that starts, or the event that starts with uh, the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an event that is far more important than Independence Day of the United States of America and far more consequential than Independence Day of the United States of America. That is the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so when the Muslims gathered and they uh, devised the first Islamic calendar, they decided that they would do so based on the event of the Hijrah. Not the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not the day he became a messenger or a prophet, not the day he conquered Mecca, but the day that he migrated to Medina. This is the day in which, or this is the event in which they decided that they would start the Islamic calendar. And so we will soon enter into the year 1446. 1446 years since the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And this hijrah of Rasulullah SAW, it occurred 13 years after Rasulullah SAW first received the message. And his total mission was 23 years. So for the majority of his mission, he was in Mecca. And the hijrah took place 13 years after the initial uh, revelation that came to Rasulullah SAW. So he spent the majority of his time in Mecca. But yet, the hijrah marks the starting point of the first Islamic society. As when the Muslims, they migrated, this marked the first Islamic state and first Islamic society. And so this was a turning point in history. In history in general and of course for the history of the Muslims specifically. So what we want to focus on inshallah ta'ala in this khutbah today is not the actual hijrah journey, but some of the events, important events and factors that led up to the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hijrah to Medina al-Munawara. This was divine planning by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made hijrah to this specific place. To Al-Madinah and nowhere else. And it was Medina and nowhere else that Rasulullah SAW made the Hijrah to. And it would not have been anywhere else but Al-Madinah. And we will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfectly planned this event to make the Hijrah to Medina Al-Munawwara. First, Hijrah is not something new to prophets. Other prophets have made Hijrah before. Rasulullah SAW was not the first prophet to make Hijrah. In fact, there were several prophets mentioned in the Quran who also made hijrah and they left their land to another land. Amongst them is Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ As Ibrahim alayhi salam says in the Quran, I am going to my Lord and he will guide me. And also Musa alayhi salam, he made hijrah when he accidentally killed an Egyptian and he was not able to trust and have confidence in the corrupt justice system. And he knew that they would come and they would try to kill and execute him. He left. He left in fear, looking around, making sure that nobody's following him. And he went to a place called Madian. Making hijrah to a place called Madian. And others, Prophet Salih, Prophet Nuh, Prophet Lut, and others, they all made hijrah for Allah, Allah's sake. And so Rasulullah was not the first to make the hijrah, uh, and this journey of migrating from one place to another. Other prophets before him also made similar journeys. And this hijrah event, even though it occurred 13 years after Rasulullah first received the revelation, the idea of the hijrah was planted from day number one. From day number one, Rasulullah had the idea that this day would come in which he would have to leave Mecca, his hometown, the place he was born and the place that he was brought up. From day number one, this was information that was given to him. As Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah narrates in his Sahih, in the chapter on the beginning of Revelation, when the revelation first came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and after he received the revelation from Angel Jibreel in the cave, he went back to his wife Khadija, his beloved wife Khadija, and he told her what happened, and he sought her comfort and her assurance. And so she covered him, and she comforted him, and she gave him words of solace. And then she took him to her cousin, a man by the name of Warqa ibn Nawfal. He was a man who had become a Christian in the days of Jahiliyyah. And he had knowledge of the scriptures of the Torah and the Injil. And he knew about revelation. And so they went to Warqa ibn Nawfal and Rasulullah explained to him what he saw. And Warqa ibn Nawfal said that what has come to you is the same being that came to Musa alayhi salam. It's the same being that came to Musa alayhi salam. And then at the very end of their conversation, Warqa said something that caused Rasulullah to be very surprised and shocked. Warqa said to him, I wish that I would be alive on the day in which your people will drive you out. And Rasulullah was shocked because he was known as Sadiq al-Amin amongst his people. The trustworthy, the honest. They would leave their possessions with him. He was the one who put the black stone back on the Kaaba after they had rebuilt the Kaaba. He was respected. He was the grandson of Abdul Muttalib. The one who was present when Abraha came and tried to destroy the Kaaba. 
This is Rasulullah had much respect amongst the people. And he could not ever imagine a day would come when these same people would drive him out. But Warqa said to him, I wish I was alive on the day when your people will drive you out. And so Rasulullah said in shock, Are they really going to drive me out? Are they going to kick me out? And Warqa, he said that, yes. Nobody has come with the message that you came with, except that they were met with resistance and their people tried to drive them out. So very, from the very beginning, from day number one, Rasulullah has already has the idea that he's going to make the hijrah and he's going to have to leave Mecca and go somewhere else. He didn't know where. It's not information of given where he had to go, but he knew that one day he's going to come where he has to leave. And so the time came 13 years later to make the hijrah to Medina. But there were cer certain events and factors that played into being, Medina being the place for the hijrah. And this is the divine, perfect plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will mention a few of them inshallah. Number one, why Medina and not anywhere else? Medina was a place where Rasulullah had the relatives. He had relatives from uh, his grandfather's side. Abdul Muttalib was, uh, his mother was uh, a woman from a tribe called Bani Najjar. And they were from the tribe of, uh, a tribe in Medina. So Rasulullah had relatives from Medina. And relatives and having family relations in those days meant everything. If you had family relationships, then this would help you a lot. It would get, get you through a lot of things. If you had family relationships. And back in those days, it was very common to have marriages just based on political alliances, just to get that family connection for political alliance. A king, a leader, would, a, a leader of a tribe, a chief, they would marry from another tribe just so that they could have that political alliance. And this would help them in their uh, to, to assert their power and authority. So Rasulullah had relatives in Medina. And this, no doubt, was a help to his cause. And played a factor in going to Medina. And in fact, his mother and his father, they used to make trips to Medina, where they would visit the relatives of Banu Najjar. And it was one of these trips where Rasulullah he would travel with his mother to Medina. And on the way back, she fell ill and she passed away. It was one of these trips. She fell ill and she passed away. And she died in a place between Mecca and Medina. So Rasulullah SAW, his parents, they used to visit Medina and they had relatives there. So this was one very important factor that allowed Medina to be the place for the hijrah, for the migration. Another important event was the history that occurred shortly before the migration. When Rasulullah SAW went to Medina, he did not go just as a refugee, just as an immigrant. He went as the undisputed leader of Medina. And this is something that doesn't happen in history. Usually, a person who's a refugee, they're leaving, they're fleeing. They're going to a place and they're going to be treated as a second-class citizen. Maybe hardly get, be able to get any housing, any assistance to the place that they are migrating to. But yet, Rasulullah when he went to Medina, he was welcomed, not just with any warm welcome, he was welcomed as the undisputed leader of Medina. He came into a situation where he was from day one in charge of everything in Medina. How is that possible? This happened due to the history that occurred right before in, uh, in Medina, before the Hijrah of Rasulullah In Medina, there were two main Arab tribes, which later became known as the Ansar. We know them as the Ansar. And we know them as those who helped and supported Rasulullah Wasallam. But these two tribes, who later became known as the Ansar, they were at each other's necks and at each other's throats before the coming of Rasulullah And they had wars that they fought between each other. And they had very violent wars. And these wars went on for years. And it culminated in a very final battle called Yawm Bu'ad. This is a battle in which almost all of the leaders of these two tribes, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj, they were killed. They were either killed or they were injured. And so, after this, there was a void in leadership in Medina. All the major leaders, all the chiefs, they've been killed. And now Medina has a void in leadership. They are looking for a leader. And this is something that Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, that, 
qaddamahullahu li rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wasallam this was a day that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned in advance for rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in which all the leaders of the quraysh or all the leaders of the aws and the khazraj they were killed the main leaders they were killed in this battle and as a result this opened a void in leadership and also opened the door for the ansar to become muslim to have an easier time accepting islam and so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he migrated to medina they were looking for a leader they were in search of a leader they needed somebody to unite them after having fought for a number of years and this was uh, one of the also miraculous events that happened in that these people were fighting and killing each other and they became brothers in faith and allah reminds us about this in the quran wa'tasimu bi habri llah jami'a and hold fast to the rope of allah and then allah reminds the ansar wazkuru ni'mat allah 'alaykum and remember the favor of allah upon you wazkuru ni'mat allah 'alaykum idh kuntum a'da'an when you were enemies you were killing each other you were fighting each other idh kuntum a'da'an fa'allafa bayna qulubikum and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined your hearts together fa'allafa bayna qulubikum wa asbahtum ikhwanan and you became brothers after having being, being enemies wa kuntum fa'asbahtum ikhwanan wa kuntum ala shafa hufratin min an-nar fa anqadakum minha you became brothers after you were at the edge almost of destruction and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them and joined them together and they became later known as the ansar the helpers of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this was the situation they were in need of leadership and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came at the perfect time where there was a void in leadership and there was only one other candidate who would possibly be taking over the leadership position and that was a man by the name of abdullah ibn ubay ibn salud and he later on became the leader of the hypocrites leader of the munafiqeen and when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam complained about his behavior one time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told that don't take it personally that this man abdullah ibn ubay before you came they were about to crown him as the leader of medina but then you came and you took the position that was possibly going to him and ever since that day he had enmity and hatred and jealousy for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this caused him to outwardly profess islam but harbor hypocrisy and disbelief in his heart and he died as a disbeliever as a hypocrite also from the factors that played a significant role in medina being the place as the where the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi made the hijra was the fact that there were jews present in medina there were three main jewish tribes in medina what were jewish tribes doing in medina they were waiting for a messenger to come because this messenger was predicted in their scriptures alladhina alladhi yajidunahu maktuban 'indahum fi at-tawrati wal injil as allah says in the quran that they find the the, the the mention of this prophet in their scriptures in the Torah and in the Injil so the Jews they knew that a prophet was coming and so they settled in Medina because they knew that he was coming in this area and the Jews would mention this prophet they, they, but they thought that this prophet was coming from amongst them they didn't think it was coming from he was coming from the Arabs they thought that this prophet is coming from amongst them from the Jews and they used to use this against the polytheists the Arab polytheists ولما جاءهم كتاب من عند الله مصدق لما معهم وكانوا يستفتحون على الذين كفروا and when came to them confirmation of what is with them in their in their scriptures and before that they used to use this as a way of intimidating the Arab polytheists they used to say to the Arab polytheists that a prophet is going to come soon from amongst us and when he comes we're going to destroy you just like the people of Ad were destroyed so they used to threaten the Arab polytheists and say that a prophet is coming from amongst us ولما جاءهم ما عرفوا كفروا به but when the prophet did come and he did not come from amongst them but he come, came from the arabs and they recognized him but they rejected him الذين اتيناه كتابا يعرفونه كما يعرفون ابناءهم those who have been given the scriptures they recognize him they knew he was a prophet just as they recognized their own sons but they rejected him حسدا من عند انفسهم out of enmity and hatred and jealousy uh for the uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they rejected him but they knew that he was coming and so this information the fact that a prophet was being talked about no doubt it played a factor in medina being the place for the hijra that the people knew or they at least aware of this event so there was no surprise 
when they heard about the Prophet coming. And this allowed the Ansar to accept Islam and enter Islam very quickly. Before Rasulullah left and made the Hijrah, he sent ahead of him Sahaba, such as Mus'ab ibn Umayr. And he sent him as the first ambassador to Medina. And within a short amount of time, almost all of the Ansar became Muslim. Islam entered into every house into, uh, in Medina. And this was, no doubt, uh, one of the factors was that they heard about a prophet coming from the Jews who would threaten them with that information. And the Jews, afterward, they rejected Rasulullah And later on, uh, the Ansar, and uh, members of the Ansar, they, they criticized the Jews. And they said to them, amongst them, Mu'adh al Jabal, he said to the Jews, O oh Jews, fear Allah and embrace Islam. You used to invoke Allah for the coming of Muhammad وسلم, when we were still disbelievers. And you used to tell us he would come and, dis- and you used to describe him to us. So Mu'ad told them that you used to tell us about this prophet. You used to describe him to us. So why don't you accept Islam? Why don't you believe in him? Why are you rejected him? Why are you being stubborn? But they continued to be stubborn and they rejected him only out of arrogance and envy. Also from the factors that allowed the Muslims to migrate to Medina and successfully migrate to Medina is that they had a trial run. They had a hijrah that occurred before this. Rasulullah did not make this hijrah, but some of the companions did. And that was the hijrah to Al-Habasha, to present-day Ethiopia. And this occurred very early on when the Muslims were being tortured, especially the weak amongst them. And so Rasulullah allowed a number of companions to migrate to a place called Al-Habasha. And there Rasulullah told them that go there, there is a just and fair king and he will allow you to stay and he will not treat you unfairly. So the Muslims, a small group of Muslims, they made this migration to Al-Habasha. Rasulullah did not make that migration, but he allowed a number of Muslims to do so. And this was a trial run. They were able to observe what happened afterwards. They saw how Quraysh followed them like a hawk. And they went all the way to Habasha trying to bring the Muslims back. And they saw what Quraysh did as a result and the response of Quraysh. So they knew that if we're going to make a migration that is going to look something like that, and Quraysh is going to have a similar response. So all these factors, they played in Medina being the place for the Hijrah. And it was Medina and nowhere else but al Medina. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين so before Rasulullah made the hijrah to Medina, the table was already spread. The scene was already set. Everything was there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had planned perfectly this migration before. And everything was set up for Rasulullah to make that journey. And just one thing remained before this journey actually went into effect. And that was the decision of the Quraysh to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Quraysh finally, they ran out of patience after having tried all different ways to stop the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they finally came to the decision that the only way that we're going to get rid of this problem that they have is by assassinating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so they gathered together. And this was after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa lost his uncle, Abu Talib, who was his shelter, the one who protected him. And all these years, all these 13 years that they were in Mecca, Rasulullah was under the protection of his uncle Abu Talib. And during this period, he was never harmed. And Abu Talib remained by his side, even though he never became a Muslim, but he remained by his, by his side, protecting Rasulullah When uh, Abu Talib passed away, then this granted Quraysh the opportunity that they were waiting for. And so they finally use this opportunity to try to get rid of Rasulullah for good. And Allah mentions this in the Quran, the different options that they discuss. 
ليثبتوك أو يقتلوك أو يخرجوك. And when they plotted and they planned either to restrain you or to kill you or to drive you out. And they had a big meeting and they had discussed all these options and they came to the conclusion that the only thing that's going to work is that we need to get rid of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and assassinate him and kill him. And so they made that plan. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of this verse, وَيَمْكُرُونَ They plan. وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also planned. And we saw the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He laid the foundations of this journey way before causing this event to occur in the perfect way and there could not be a more perfect way in which this event played out. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ And they planned. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also planned. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. So they made their plans, but Allah planned this event way before they made their event. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set up the situation in Medina to allow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go there and be the undisputed leader of Medina and set up the first Islamic state in society. And from then and from, from there, the mission and the da'wah spread and covered and encompassed all of Medina and it went beyond that and they later on conquered Mecca and the entire peninsula, Arabian Peninsula and later on in a few short years they conquered the Persian Empire and they made inroads into the Roman Empire and Islam spread throughout and they went to places like India and uh, like Morocco and Spain and other places of, uh, all around the world. So this was the, these are the events and factors that caused Medina to be the place to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that his prophet would migrate to and make the place of the first Islamic society. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from what we've heard today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect us to our history, to allow us to study our history and be connected to the events, these important events, and not to be in a state of heedlessness and ignorance about our Islamic history. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَثَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في في السودان اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في جميع العالم اللهم امين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ان الله يأمرك بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله واذكروا يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون أكبر